Income tax 2021-2022 software example disposition of business property. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into income tax 2021-2022. Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want the form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, we got the single filer Adam Smith living in Beverly Hills 90210. We're starting out with the business income flowing through here to the 100,000. Let's see what that flow through looks like. We're starting out with the Schedule C. This is going to be the Schedule C profit or loss. We've got the 120,000 starting at the gross income minus the expenses of the 20,000 getting us to that 100,000. That pull into Schedule 1. Schedule 1 with the income. Line number 3 which pulls into the first page of the form 1040. Line number 8 with the 100,000. We then have the self-employment tax being calculated on that. Self-employment tax on the 100,000. That's getting us to that 14,129, which is on page two of the form 1040, page number two. Other tax right here, the 14,129. And then we got half of that that gets to be deducted on the Schedule E, as we can see here, the 7,065 on the above the line deduction or deduction for uh, AGI, adjusted gross income. That's page two of the Schedule 1. So there is that that pulls into the page one of the form 1040. Page one of the 1040, there's the 7,096 to get us to the 92,935. We got the standard deduction of the 12,550. Then the qualified business uh, income deduction, which we're going to let the computer calculate at the 1677 at this point. Taxable income then 64,308. Let's mirror that in our Excel worksheet. 100,000 being drawn in from the Schedule C, which I just recalculated our little income schedule here. We've got the, the, the tax being calculated, other taxes, self-employment tax, which we populated over here and did a calculation for it in the prior presentation. That was good times. Additional taxes. So there's the 14, uh, 130 that's pulling in here, half of that being deducted with the above the line deduction, which is the adjustments to income, taken half of that self-employment tax. There's the 92,935, which we're seeing over here, 92,935. We've got then the 12,550 standard deduction. We got the qualified business income. We're relying on the software to calculate at this point. We've got the 64,308 at the taxable income. Same point here 64308 page number two calculating the federal income tax at the 9900 the fit there's the 9900 plus the 14130 self-employment tax gets us to the 2430 on the tax at this point so now we want to think about a property that we might have on the book so just a quick recap on the property in general if you bought something like equipment then even if paying cash for it, we can't generally just put it on the expenses here because you can imagine if I were to do so, it could be a kind of a big distortion. So let's say I bought some like equipment that I'm going to use for the next 10 years. If I just put it on the books as equipment expense, that would bring my income down to zero. But if I'm going to use it for the next 10 years from an accounting standpoint, you should put it on the books as an asset. From a tax standpoint, they're also going to require you to do that. It gets a little messy, however, to do that because the tax depreciation schedules are not designed to be the most appropriate book depreciation schedules oftentimes. So from a small business perspective, you might then choose to run your books on basically a tax basis for depreciation purposes, or you might have separate depreciation basically for the books and the taxes so that you'll have to make that adjustment uh, at the end of the period. So if you're a tax preparer, you got to kind of keep that in, in alignment or in your mind. So for example, if we put the put this on the books, I'm going to say that we have a depreciable kind of thing. It's going to be a depreciable piece of equipment, let's say. So let's say that it's going to be depreciation, and I'm just going to call it generic equipment. Equipment. I'm not going to call it generic equipment, just equipment, but you you like a generic, you have that in your mind. That part's in your mind. And then it's going to go to Schedule C, and then the activity, it's going to be that restaurant Schedule C, the category. Let's just say it's going to be a, let's make it a, a 
machinery and equipment and the date placed in service let's just make it at the beginning of 010121 and then we're going to say the cost is let's make it at the 75,000 let's go for and then the depreciation method will pick up we put it on the books for uh, machinery let's say it's seven years seven years makers seven years makers office equipment furniture so let's put it there actually let's put it on the five year we'll put it on the five year office equipment rental five year makers so then so there we have it so so there it is and we'll keep it at that so just to get an idea of that then if i if i pull this over to the forms and look at my schedule c and say okay what happened to the schedule c well now i've got this depreciation that that has been taken so you you note that it's not being recorded in the format of like like uh, just an expense in terms of equipment expense but it's in depreciation the reason it's the full amount here if we look at the schedule then we've got the let's look at the regular schedule now we got this added depreciation schedule to help us out with the calculation so we got the 75,000 and then we took the special depreciation so that's going to be an accelerated depreciation method which they're trying to do to kind of like stimulate the economy so that's why you get all of it in year one which is kind of like just expensing it which i just said you don't just expense it because you got to do it this way but you have to do it this way so that you then go through the code to get the special depreciation and then once they change this and, and you know they might then remove the special depreciation or you might have more property than is going to qualify for the special depreciation and in that case you'd only get part of it uh in the current year so that's why the tax code is different than bookkeeping because on a bookkeeping standpoint, you would think that that you would just allocate it over the useful life from an accounting standpoint. But the tax code, again, could change. So they could have the special depreciation, 179 depreciation, and then that could go away, you know, over time. So that and that's going to be the differences between the tax code and and the book. So let's just pretend that it didn't apply just so we can see the depreciation being something different than the 75,000. So just for just for argument's sake, if we removed it, then you'd have the 75,000. And then basically this is a double declining kind of calculation uh, for if you know depreciation calculations and a half year convention. So double declining half year. And so then we've got the 15,000. So then you would only get the 15,000 in the current uh, year on the schedule C. So note that you'd have to record it as on the books as an asset and then depreciate it in the tax code. You might have those accelerated depreciation methods, which could give you a significant amount of depreciation in the year of purchase. So that's that's the general idea. So now let's let's say we had something on the books in the past. So let's bring this on and say, let's say this was on the books as of, let's say, let's say 2000, as of like a couple of years ago, so let's say this happened on 18, uh, 2018. And so it was on the books there. And then we had prior year depreciation. Let's just say the prior year depreciation was 20 prior year depreciation allowance, 20,000 prior year am depreciation or prior year depreciation or am let's make it 20,000 here. So there we have it 20 thousand there okay so now if i go back on over to the forms now we the current year depreciation is being recorded even though i made the purchase in the prior year because we're allocating the depreciation over the life if i go back to my depreciation schedules here look at the regular schedule let's zoom it in a bit zoom it in we got the seventy-five thousand, and then we've got we've got then prior year depreciation was at the twenty thousand. And then the current year is is at the 8,640. So now let's say we sold the thing. Let's say we sold it like in the middle of the year. If I sold it in the middle of the year, now I'm going to have a 20,000 uh, amount of, uh, of depreciation that I already took. And the current depreciation, I'm going to have to basically calculate a bit as well. Also, I just want to just point out that if I look at the Schedule C here, this is just showing us the allocation of the cost and we're only looking at an income statement so you see no balance sheet this would make more sense if we had a balance sheet 
but we have no balance sheet because it's supposed to be easier or more simplified without a balance sheet. That's why you just have the Schedule C. But we have a balance sheet account, a balance sheet component of the depreciation schedules, which is basically the fixed asset or property planted equipment part of the balance sheet. So that is, is kind of what we're looking at over here. It's kind of a balance sheet account calculation. Okay, so now let's say we sold it in, in the middle of the year. Other thing to, to note is that if you're dealing with a business that is not on a tax basis, but they're recording their books on a book basis, then they might have different calculations. Their book calculation might look like this. We'll, we'll, and here it's the same. Let's, let's bring it over and make it different. Let's make it different for the books. Make it different for the books. Okay, I just made up a difference here. So if it was different for the books, that means that what's if your client it recorded it on their side, they would probably record it on a book basis. And even then, they might mess up, you know, the book basis calculation for it. So, so that means that it, it gets kind of confusing. Sometimes from, from an accounting standpoint, you'd have to like reverse what the client did and then enter it again. And that gets into bookkeeping because you got to record it in accordance with the tax law. And that's another reason why the, the Schedule C can get more confusing when you got these sales of basically property that are taking place. So I'm gonna go back to the tax depreciation here. And let's say there was a sale now, let's say that we sold it. Let's say we sold it in the middle of the current year, 06, 15, and then uh, 2, 1. And then it's not a bulk sale, so we're only selling one item. If you sold multiple items, then, it, then you can kind of combine them together. Uh, basis adjustment. No, I'm not going to put in the expenses. And I'm going to say we sold it for 70,000. Let's go back on over to our form. So now we got the depreciation. So we still got some depreciation because we still had it for part of the year that is taking place here. If I go then to my depreciate to my depreciation schedules, basically like the balance sheet type of, uh, of form. So now we've got the 75,000. We've got the uh, 20,000 from prior years. And now we've got the current year depreciation that took place that is now being flowing through to the Schedule C. And then we've got the gain or loss calculation that is going to be applicable as well that wasn't on the Schedule C, but rather we see the form here. We see the form sale of business property. And then if we go to page two, it gives us some detail about it. So we have the calculation. So you'll recall that if I pull up, well, if I just do this in Excel, you'll recall basically we had the cost, which was 75,000 minus the depreciation, which we could pick up from the schedule over here was the 75 and the current year for the three, for the 4320. So that's going to give us then that gives us the 24. 320 so the basis basically would be the 50 000, the difference between those two the 5680 and then the sales price was 70,000 so that would give us generally a gain of that 19 uh, 320 so that's that would be just a you know the general idea we're basically letting the software do the calculation here so that's the property component in the categorization of 1245 property and then we see the 4797 we got the 19320 that's pulling over here and then that's going to be going to uh part one uh line four so redemption gain on line 17 enter on schedule one so that then flows up to schedule one and now we have our item up here with the schedule c income which is now at the 95680 and then this gain or uh, other gains or losses from the 4797, the 19320, that then flow into the 1040. So within the 1040, we see that flowing in from the other income on line number eight. So now let's just make an adjustment. Let's say, well, what, what if we had a situation where like we had a loss on it? So let's say we sold it, if I pull out my little, calculation let's say we sold it for 25,000 now we'd have a loss situation you would think let's plug that into the system and say okay well what about a loss situation so i'm going to say we sold it now for 25,000 going back on over to the forms so now we're going to we're going to take a look at the 
lost here. So now we've got the form 4797, sale of business property, equipment. We had the gross, uh, the gross sales price, the depreciation, and this is the cost or basis. So we get the 25680, which we saw in our Excel calculation here. So that then pulling over. So whenever you have a loss, the question is, well, do I get to take the loss? So that's flowing in to the schedule one and it's netting out over here on kind of like the income line. So here's our income from the bottom line of the schedule C, the loss of the 25, 680 summing up to the 70,000 in total, pulling that over once again to the form 1040 line number eight. So just a quick view at some of the complexities with, with the sales, they can get somewhat complicated and just note that if you're doing the tax preparing type of business, or if you're on if you're on the bookkeeping side of things in your business, then there's gonna you got to be careful with the business property because of those differences with the depreciation schedule. Whether you as a small business or as a tax professional are keeping the books or helping your client keep the books on a tax basis or uh, having different book basis records, and then then there could be some accounting involved. They might need help uh, in order to, to basically record the transaction properly with regards to disposition so that they're in alignment with you know the tax code and the, and the rules related to the tax code, which usually takes into account kind of bookkeeping knowledge to, to pick that up. And usually, you know, CPAs are usually, that's what they're more trained in a lot of times. So when you're picking up those business returns, then you just want to figure out how much bookkeeping work are you are you looking to put in with and do you have a network to kind of to kind of help out with those situations